You might have heard of the golden ratio before. It's a number that comes from taking a line and cutting it in two, but in such a way that the ratio of the shortest segment to the longest is the same as the ratio of the longest to the original line. You end up with a ratio of 1.618033987, a number that can't be written as a fraction and a number that's become known as the golden ratio. Now you can use this number to create golden rectangles and golden spirals and the internet is filled with blog articles and videos telling us how the golden ratio relates to beauty. How these rectangles and spirals are the most aesthetically pleasing to the human eye. It's said that the ancient Greeks prized this number and use it in their architecture when building temples and monuments like the Parthenon. It's said that Leonardo da Vinci used this number when creating his art and that he believed that the most beautiful human bodies had proportions that fit the golden ratio. It's even said that people are attracted to faces that display the golden ratio, where the width of your mouth is 1.618 times the width of your nose or the length of your eyebrows is 1.618 times the width of your eyes and so on and that based on these ideas, Elizabeth Taylor has the most mathematically perfect face. Now these ideas are everywhere. You'll find it in textbooks, Wikipedia pages, even BBC documentaries. And it all sounds so compelling. And as a mathematician, there are few people who would want beauty to be defined by a single number more than I do. But the problem is, it just isn't true. Let's take the simplest claim first that the golden rectangle is the most pleasing. Well, you can try it yourself. Which of these rectangles do you think is the most beautiful? And feel free to pause while you decide. Okay, done? Now actually, the golden rectangle is hidden here four times, but an experiment by George Mikowski found that actually most people found this rectangle the most pleasing. Clearly then, humans aren't automatically attracted to the golden rectangle. Okay, next let's take the face. Now, the problem with trying to use the golden ratio to define human beauty is that if you're looking hard enough for a pattern like this one, you'll almost certainly find it, especially if you're prepared to be a little bit loose with your definitions. How do you decide where the start of your ear is? And how do you definitively say where your nose ends? And how do you do this to such a degree of accuracy to get five or more decimal places in your golden ratio measurement? Now, there are lots of ratios in the human body that are around 1.5, 1.6, but exactly 1.618 and so on to infinity. No, sorry, I'm not buying it. Thing is, real science is about trying as hard as you can to disprove your own theories. If the harder you try, the more you fail to disprove your own ideas, the more evidence there is to suggest that what you're saying is right. Now, as much as I like beauty to be defined by a single number, I'm afraid that trawling through thousands of faces and measuring every possible ratio until you find something that fits your theory just isn't science. Now, this is true of those images I showed you of the Parthenon and of Leonardo da Vinci's artwork too. Now, when presenting this as evidence, um, no one really seems that bothers that the rectangle doesn't even contain the full width of the Parthenon, or that the rectangle starts at a completely arbitrary point along the base, or that the diagonal lines signifying the roof aren't even really along the lines of the roof. Also, sorry, WTF is that spiral even supposed to be telling me about Greek architecture? And if I haven't convinced you, for the record, there isn't a shred of evidence that the ancient Greeks even knew about the golden ratio, let alone that they used it deliberately. Now, the golden ratio does sometimes appear in nature through the Fibonacci sequence. Think pine cones, sunflower seeds, and populations of rabbits. But it's not a catch-all definition of beauty. Also, there are some more modern painters and musicians and architects who did set out to experiment using the ratio in their work no doubt after hearing and believing all of the tripe about ancient Greeks and da Vinci. But in terms of being a catch-all definition for beauty, I'm afraid, as mathematician Keith Devlin puts it, that's just the myth that won't go away. Between the two bones. 
The joint is kept stable by ligaments, which form a kind of capsule. And inside that is a fluid that stops the two ends of the bones rubbing together. It's called synovial fluid, hence the name.